Amen. Well, thank you so much, uh, Braxton's, for sharing with us. Uh, it's always uh, great to see you guys and be reminded uh, again of what Jesus did for us. And actually, we're going to be continuing that thought throughout the service this morning uh, together. For those of you guys that don't know me, uh, my name is Christopher Hall. I have, I have been a disciple here in the North Region for a long time. Uh, I live up in Beverly with my wife and four kids, and, uh, and I love it. I really do. I will tell you though, I do have a wife, four kids and two dogs. So what that means is, uh, well, I will try, they, they're going to, I'm sure, keep uh, as quiet as they can. Don't be surprised if you hear a, a, an occasional uh, happy child, hopefully uh, not a crying child or a barking or whining dog. Uh, so I do apologize for that ahead of time, but I, it's great to see you guys this morning. Uh, we're going to start off, uh, and we are continuing the service uh, or the, the series of It's a Wonderful Life. And this morning, we're specifically going to be talking about the gift that keeps on giving. You know, uh, it's, this is a great topic, and I was really excited when, when Jimmy asked me to talk about it, um, because I do feel like it's a great gift. And I want to make, I, I love getting the opportunity to share with you guys because it, me, it helps me focus so clearly uh, as well. So with that, I wanted to start off by looking at a scripture that I'm sure many of you are familiar with that we often read around this time. Uh, you guys can see my screen, right? I hope, excellent, great. All right, so it says, an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. You know, here in the Christmas story, right from the very beginning, we see the greatest gift, the greatest gift that was ever given. You know, the, the, the angels start off by saying, I bring you great news that this will cause great joy for all the people. And if you look at the characters in the Christmas story, uh, at least in the biblical narrative of Luke, you'll find that it, it's, it's indeed true that Jesus came for all people. And that's the first thing I want to focus on, is that this gift came for all people. Guys, I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I love that idea because, you know, the, the people in this story that we're going to, in, in these different uh, segments we're going to be looking at, were from all different backgrounds, all different standards of living, all different jobs, races, and even belief systems. And they come together during this time uh, and actually, I think, have a lot to, to, to teach us and to show us when it comes to this gift, the, the greatest gift that was ever given. We, um, you know, we, with that idea that, that, this, that this gift came and it was meant for all people, I think that's the first thing that we realize, right? The gift was meant for all people, right? But what that specifically means, all people also means specifically you, right? That, that gift did come for all people, just like the angels proclaimed, but it came for you, you specifically. As I look around my screen here, guys, I, I see so many of you that I've known for so long. And it's great to see, see Kathy, and Uart and, and, and Maria and Mark Sessinger and, and Mike Jones, so many of you, uh, it's, uh, it's great to connect with you here, but I hope that you guys are feeling specifically and, and are knowing specifically that Jesus, that this gift came for you and that you're connecting with that. You know, I, I, uh, I told you guys earlier, I have a wife, I have four small kids. My oldest is, is 15, my youngest is eight. Uh, and it's a great time around Christmas, uh, right? And I, I know many of you are our parents or were once children. I think most of you were once children. Jimmy, I'm not sure, uh, but, but the rest of you, I'm pretty sure you were children once. Um, you know, the, the, the joy that kids have when they open, well, actually not even, not even when they open the presents, right? My favorite moment isn't actually opening the presents. It's when they first come down to see the presents you guys know what I'm talking about? That moment, like they get all excited the night before and then they wake up in the morning. And, and in my house, it's, uh, it's funny. I, I, I make them, no one can go downstairs, right? We all have to go downstairs together and they all have to come into my room and I, I make them wait till a certain time till we all go to, to count down together. And it's, it's a great memory. I love it uh, every year. So, um, but I, I, I love that moment. 
what I want to do now is we're going to watch a really short video of just some kids Christmas morning. I This is a new way to show videos on here, so I really hope it works uh, so you guys uh, can partake in it. But even if it doesn't work out, I think you all have a memory, or likely many of you have a memory of what it was like to uh, to either be come down as a kid on, on that Christmas morning or to watch your own kids do it. So bear with me for one second as I start this video. I hope, I hope you guys saw that okay uh, and that it came through. Excellent, good. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I, one of the things I love in that, there's two parts that I really love in that little video. Um, it's, it's the part where the, the kid is so happy, he's like giggling. It's the, the little kid, he's got the headgear thing on and he's like giggling, he's so excited. Uh, I, I, I love that part. I don't know why, um, but it just, uh, it, and then the other kid that you can just see his face, he's just screaming with excitement. Like he has no idea what to do with himself, right? No idea what to do with his, with his face, with his body, anything. He's just so excited uh, for the gift he was given uh, that morning. And I, I just think that's an incredible, uh, incredible idea. But, you know, we, we see those kids and how excited they were for, for these toys that, that, that have a shelf life, right? They, they're only going to be good for so long. Um, what about us and as we receive the greatest gift? Uh, just give me a second here. I actually want to start my, I realize I'm not sharing my slides, so I'm going to share my slides again. Uh, sorry, guys. I do apologize for this as I'm trying to figure out new ways to help this be more effective for everybody. So let's see. We'll share our screen. There we go. All righty. You guys see the slides again? Yes, okay, great. All right, sorry, it went all the way back. Here we go. So you guys, I, 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 as we watch that video and we think about uh, how excited those kids were, right? I just want us to, again to focus for a moment on how we react to the greatest gift that was ever given, right? Jesus was the greatest gift that we've ever received, that we can ever receive and that we continue to receive, right? Jesus, it really is the gift that keeps on, keeps on giving. You know, I think that the, the idea of, of Jesus being the greatest gift and, and the excitement that we could have and should have, for many of us, and I'll speak for me, but for me specifically, it can be drowned out or at least be, be blunted by certain fears I have. And you might say, well, what do you mean by fears? Well, here's how I'm defining fear for this morning. It's the emotions and thought patterns that rob us of peace, joy, and hope. Peace, joy, and hope. 
I want to partake in that gift. I want to partake in that gift that is given, that was given and continues to be given to me. See, Jesus brings peace, joy, and hope. But my fear, my fear can rob me of that, 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 uh, that peace, joy, and hope. So, so guys, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to reflect now just for a minute on, on, on what's going on in your life. Are you letting fear rob you and take away that joy of receiving that gift? You know, this morning, we are going to look at the Christmas story. We're going to look at, at the, some of the events surrounding and the, the event of Jesus' birth. And I want to look at some, some players in that story and look at how they dealt with the, with the possibility of fear, but then how they overcame that fear and had, had peace, had joy, had hope, and how that, what that can teach us today about how we can continue to receive peace, joy, and hope. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to look at Zechariah and Elizabeth. Now, I don't know how familiar you guys are with the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth. It's really pretty cool. You know, for, the, for those of you that might not know, Elizabeth was the uh, cousin of Mary, and she was pregnant around the same time. And her, her husband, Zechariah, was a, a priest, and they were both righteous before God. It says in Luke chapter 1 that they, that they both walked blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. That's a pretty good thing to have said about you in the Bible. I'd be pretty happy if, if, if I was recording the Bible as saying I walked blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. But even then, even then, I think they dealt with some, or they at least had the temptation of fear that could have robbed them of the joy of what was going on. You know, they had prayed for a while uh, about having a child and they were, they were old at this point and still child, childless. So much so that, 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 uh, that Zechariah, he went into the temple to perform uh, a, a very special duty, actually. And, and uh, an angel of the Lord came to him and kind of told him some of the things that were going on. And, and his reply to the angel was, well, we're old. <laughs> that, was, that was his reply, right? He, he, he had a little bit of doubt there. He's like, is this really going to happen? Can this happen? But you see, here's the, the, the really... The, the interesting part, actually, the angel then uh, made it so that he, he couldn't speak uh, right up until, well, right up until the, the birth later on. But it's, it was really cool to see that as soon as, as, soon as, the, as, soon as he expressed his faith and talked about how the, the fact that John, John would be born, uh, that his voice came back. You know, he had, he had this, um, this, 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 that time period of where he couldn't speak. And I, I wonder what that was like. I don't know if, if fear or doubts crept into him at that point. I don't know what his wife Elizabeth was feel, feeling during that time. But, you know, I, I can't help but think that perhaps they were, were concerned that some of, their, some of their mistakes were blocking them. Some of their past mistakes, their past sins could have been blocking them. I'm sure that as they were praying during this time for a child, they were wondering, you know, is God hearing me? Why isn't he answering me? Not that God wasn't answering them, but I wonder if that's how they were feeling. They, they just didn't see the answer. They didn't, they didn't hear the answer. You know, I don't know. I, I wasn't there for sure, but I do know for myself when there have been times that I've had, when I've messed up or made mistakes in the past, I tend to carry them with me, right? I can think that they're still affecting me, that they're going to affect how God views me. They're going to affect God's willingness to bless me, that, I, that, that, that they affect my ability to receive his gift. And that's not, that's not what the Bible says, guys. We'll, we'll look at that even more, but that's not true. But it, it happens in my head. And I'm wondering if it can happen in your heads as well. You know, these past fears, these past concerns of, of what's happened in the past can't stop us from receiving that gift. And, you know, if you look, if we look uh, on in, um, or, you know, further on in that story, um, in Luke chapter 1, verse 12, it, it says, an angel comes to them and says, do not be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. And then they gave birth to, to John, John the Baptist, which was absolutely incredible. John, you know, the Bible says no, and basically no human has been born greater than John, save Jesus. Uh, you know, he, that, Jesus said that about him. Um, so they, they, they had this, 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 they were able to overcome their fear, their possible fears. And instead, what they had is they had, they had peace. I think, Jesus was able to, you know, this, this story, this what was going on here, they were able to have great peace. 
you know, it, it really is a, a wonderful life. We can have peace, peace from our past mistakes, peace from our, our past, uh, the fears that may drive us, the fears that could have occurred in the past no longer have to haunt us. Um, we can have peace about the past. Guys, that's the gift that keeps on giving. That's the gift that you have the ability to receive, that I have the ability to receive. And I want to take hold of that during this Christmas time. And I would encourage you to do everything you can to take hold of that during this Christmas time. Let's go on. We're actually going to, uh, to look at Mary and Joseph a little bit here too, because I think they had the opportunity to let fear control them and not receive the gifts, the gift of, of Jesus, the gift of peace, joy, and hope. Um, you know, I, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have uh, nativity scenes, but I was, um, I was, laughing because I, uh, a friend sent me this, this, uh, this picture that I, that I thought was funny and I wanted to share with you guys. Um, but it's, it's, of a, oh, that's not what I meant to do. Wrong click. There we go. So there's a, uh, let's see if I can, oh, you know what? I just clicked out of it. Oh, we won't look at it, but you know, there, there's a, there's a funny, uh, nativity scene where, where it's got all these, uh, superheroes in it and this, this little kid set it up. Um, and, it, and it, you know, because that's what he was focused on. That's what he was thinking about uh, at that time was all these superheroes. And, you know, obviously that's not what we do right now. We're going to focus very much on Jesus. So back to Mary and Joseph. Um, you know, they were, they were, uh, sorry, my screen is, see, see, you click the wrong thing, guys, and everything just, just goes the wrong way. All right, let's see. Here we go. So Mary and Joseph, Mary, Mary and Joseph, you guys are probably familiar with the story, but they were young, likely teenagers. Uh, shout out to all you teens out there. It's, uh, it's, but they, they, they also, they did that in, in Matthew chapter one, it says that the, um, the angel came to them and said, said, greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. Again, pretty cool. Like God was showing his support uh, for them for sure, right? But even with that, even with that Mary, after the, the angel came and spoke to Mary, right? We see in Luke chapter one, that Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be, right? Mary, even, even though she was given this, 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 what I would consider an overwhelming vote of support uh, from God and from the angels, I, she was still troubled at his words. She wondered what was gonna happen here in the future. And, you know, if I take a moment to meditate and, and think about it, I think I can understand why. She was young, probably a teenager. She hadn't finished, she hadn't actually gotten married yet. She was traveling. You know, she, all of this stuff going on must have been, uh, must have been fear inducing, must have been an opportunity for fear to control her thoughts and, and, her, and her mind. You know, I, I, I don't know about you, but I've been scared about what the future holds before. You know, very recently, I, um, I thought, I, or I made a decision to start um, looking around and seeing what other jobs might be out there, right? I know at my company, there's a lot of good things, but some of the things that my team does might be switching or might be going away. And I, you know, I just don't know how permanent my current position is. Um, and so I, I started thinking more about that. And as I thought more about it, I'm like, okay, I, I need to be proactive. I need to start, you know, going out there, maybe look for other opportunities, right? Maybe you guys have been in similar situations where, where you're, you're fearful for what's going on uh, in the future, what's going to happen down the road. I need to make sure that I'm providing, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a good job, I can get money, I have a good house. All of these concerns can come in and control us about the future and what's going to happen. And I, I found myself in that position. Now, so I even to the point where I actually I went for a, for a job interview and 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 went through it all and and actually uh, got the job. They they offered me the job, which was great. Uh, so I, I I was like I had to you know talk about it with my wife and and decide you know okay do I want to switch jobs? Do I want to stay where I am? What 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 do I want to do? And what I realized was that my the job I was at was actually great. It provides me with so many opportunities. It, it, it gives me, it pays well. It gives me tons of flexibility to do other things, to spend with my family, to do a lot of things uh, for the church and for the people in my community. So it's really, in some ways, it's an ideal job, but I was letting fear of an unknown future drive me to make decisions 
uh, and to want to make change so that I could control everything. That's not what's meant by the, the gift that Jesus gave was freedom from fear of the future, guys. And I think Mary, the really cool thing here is Joseph and Mary saw that too. If we look in verse, uh, later on in verses 20 and 21, the angel actually comes uh, back and says, do not be afraid. Mary was, Mary and Joseph, I think, were fearful. Right? This was speaking to Joseph, but they were fearful. Otherwise, the angel would not have said, do not be afraid. So he says, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. What I think Mary and Joseph did come to realize and what I've had to realize is that Jesus brings the gift. Oh, sorry, Jesus brings the gift of hope. See, I don't have to be fearful for the future. Instead, the gift that Jesus brings is hope. I can be hopeful for the future. I don't have to try to control it and worry about what's coming. Instead, I can be hopeful because I have Jesus. I've received that gift. Therefore, hope is available to me, not fear. I'll ask you guys to think about the same things in your lives. Are you letting fears control you? Are you letting uh, worries about what the future might hold control? what the future might hold control you or are you receiving the gift jesus gave of hope and hoping in him and that he has the the, the plan for the future you know we're going to look at uh one more story how are we looking on time good 10 34 excellent we're going to look at uh one more story here um and that is the shepherds i want to look at the shepherds i think uh i i I don't only recently guys have I realized how incredible including the shepherds in this story really is uh, and it actually was driven home to me uh, it's funny it was something I was thinking about and studying uh, two weeks ago and then um, Charlie gave a great uh, midweek this past Wednesday so thank you Charlie I saw you out there earlier can't see your face at the moment um, but Charlie gave a, gave a great uh, midweek and talked about how um, socioeconomic things uh, aren't, don't affect Jesus's uh, plan, don't affect God's plan. But I think the shepherds are a great example of that, right? These were guys who were uh, a band of brothers who were doing the dirty work of tending uh, to the sheep. Um, these were, this was not a job that, that was like, uh, you know, most people aspire to. They would work long hours. They, they didn't necessarily get paid great. Uh, they were probably lower middle class in the society. Um, but it, this story includes them. Uh, again, it, this gift is for all people. But, you know, if we see here in, in Luke chapter 2, uh, it says um, that they were terrified. And I, I don't have the scripture up here, but in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it, it basically says that their response to the angel was they were terrified. These guys were fearful. I think they were probably fearful for the present, like right then. I think they were out in the pasture, bunch of sheep, you know, I, I, I've never been a shepherd, but I can imagine, I've been out in fields uh, with, with animals and livestock. I can imagine that all of a sudden this angelic presence comes and they were scared and I don't blame them. I, I think I would have been absolutely, I think terrified would have been putting it kindly. I would have looked like, you know, we saw the video of the kids screaming about their Christmas present. I might've been like that, except not out of joy, out of, out of, out of terror, I think. Um, but, you know, they were terrified and feared for their lives. But you, the really cool thing is if you pick it up in verse uh, Luke 2, verse uh, 17, um, they realize that, that uh, after, after they really understood and took a second and the angel spoke to them, uh, in verse 17 it says, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. So guys, they got over their terror right? And they were actually able to, to be joyful once they saw Jesus, once they understood what was actually going on, once they received the gift of Jesus coming and what he meant for the world, they were actually joyful. And that's my, 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 uh, the, the, the last idea here is that Jesus brings the gift of joy, right? For you guys and for me, is it the same thing, even in the present? So, you know, we talked a little bit about about Zechariah and, and Elizabeth and worrying about the past and not worrying about the past bothering them. We talked a little bit about uh, Mary and Joseph and the future and not letting the future, fears of the future drive them. But even right now, we see with the shepherds and for ourselves, are we letting, are we letting fear of the present drive us? Are we letting 
Are we letting certain, you know, there's a lot going on in our world today, guys. We all know it, um, whether it be COVID. What I, I'm, my kids, I have four kids, I told you, they're all in virtual learning. I worry, you know, are they getting what they need to, to, to are they learning what they need to learn to be successful moving forward? That, that worries me sometimes. Do I have to do more to help them in their education that I didn't necessarily consider before? I need to think about that. You know, I, I told you guys uh, the whole COVID thing. I, I live, my parents are actually on here. Hello, mom and dad. You guys can wave. Uh, my parents are on here, but I, I worry about them for with, with COVID. Um, I worry about my own family with COVID. There's a lot to be concerned about. We hear about this, this the second wave. I can be fearful. I can be fearful of the present. Things can terrify me if I let them. But that's not what Jesus intended. Jesus brings the gift of joy. Joy is, for me, joy is a now emotion. I feel joy now. Uh, and I want to be joyful now. That's the gift that keeps on giving. That's the gift that Jesus gave to me. And he gives to each one of you. Pretty amazing, if you ask me. You know, I, I said earlier, you know, Zechariah and Elizabeth feared from their past circumstances. Mary and Joseph feared for their future. The shepherds feared for life in, in the present. But the phenomenal thing is that Jesus and, his, and the gift that keeps on giving provides us ways out for each of those, just like it did for them. You know, for Zechariah and Elizabeth, Jesus brought peace instead of fear of the past. For Mary and Joseph, Jesus brought hope for the future, not fear for the future. And for the shepherds who feared right there in the present, Jesus brought joy that they had to go and proclaim to all people. Guys, the story is the same for us today. This is the gift that keeps on giving, just like right there at Jesus's birth story. There was reasons for all these people to feel fears, different fears. Today, we can have the same problems, but we don't need to give in because that gift keeps on giving. We have the same peace, the same hope, the same joy. I hope that encourages you guys because it really, really does encourage me. You know, Jesus is really the greatest gift, the greatest gift we have ever received, we can ever receive. And I hope that you guys are realizing that, that you're able to open that gift. I mean, doesn't that, that gift looks beautiful, doesn't it? I love the wrapping job here. Uh, but it's, 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 it's no different, much like those kids on the video we watched at the very beginning, how excited they were uh, to open their presents. I, the more I meditate, the more I think about Jesus and his gift of peace, joy, and hope, and how much I need that gift, how much I desperately need that gift, I'm more and more excited that I get to open it. I get to open it today. I get to open it tomorrow. I get to open it December 25th and, and, and the whole rest of this year and into next because it is the gift that keeps on giving. I want to close out uh, with one more uh, thought. Oh, you know what? I just realized I found that I moved that, uh, that nativity scene down to the bottom. I don't know how I did that, but that was the one I was talking about of, of the kids. Uh, I don't know what that is. That's not even a nativity scene. But the, um, I want to close out by, by reading this uh, scripture again together. It says in Luke chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, I'll bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. I love that. I will bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. You know, what do you guys, uh, as we close out here, I'm going to play a song, uh, Joy to the World. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes we're, I, I miss, I miss singing together. I, I'm, I miss singing even some of the, the traditional Christmas hymns uh, together. I'm going to miss that for sure. But I'm going to play one right now. And I picked one specifically where the words are shown. And what I would ask you to do is, uh, you know, if you feel comfortable, sing along, that would be great. But I want you to read the words because I think it does encapsulate what I would like us to focus on and what I'm personally focusing on this holiday season. So just give me a second and I will uh, play that video for you guys.
57, 58, 59, 60. That's four minutes. I can do five. Sorry, guys. I realized that the uh, watching things on YouTube is always tricky. Here we go. Prove. 